Okay, welcome back everyone. So today we have a mixed linear geometry problem from CHMMC. That also has a short answer component, much to my annoyance, but let's let's do the geo part first. So you have a triangle A, B, and C. And let's draw on all the triangle centers. So O is going to be the circumcenter. Uh, we'll draw the circumcircle now. And... Let's see, I is the in-center. So then, there's a mixed linear in-circle, which is really annoying to draw. Uh, what, what do I call them? Let's call them X and Y. So perpendicular line, um, I, line AI, that's that line. Well, uh, let's call it X and Y because you know for taken. Wait, why did X go not get defined? Oh, uh, there. Okay, and then Y is interside line. Xi against the other side, so we're going to find the arc midpoint. And N, well, we'll call um, L the reflection here. And the uh, mixed linear touch point, for some reason they called it P. They really should call it T, but whatever. So then P is the mixed linear touch point. Intersect uh, perpendicular line. From M to line L I. With line L I. Okay, and then omega A is circle X Y P. So that's the mixed linear in circle. There you go. Next, um, I hate these point names, whatever. So will the U be the intersection? Whoa. U is the intersection of line AB. And the perpendicular line from I to line. Let's see. So V is reflect U on A. No. Okay, so those are the where the inner circle touches. Let's draw the inner circle actually. And then E is A plus B minus U. F is A plus C minus B. And then crap, <sighs> they're flipped. No. Okay, rename. Oh shoot, everything's flipped. Oh, here, okay, we're, we're gonna do the following. B, C1. <sighs> okay. Much better. <laughs> okay, and they introduced the Nagel point. Okay, so actually B and CF. And it's supposed to lie on AEF. Okay, so Nagel point is intersection. Just make a swap command. I'm okay, so what did you do? Let me, let me hide some stuff for now and wait, let me put it back later. So here's the mixed linear in circle. I'll color these guys blue so they're easier to see. And then you have the Nagel point, and you have a hypothesis that the Nagel point lies on the circumcircle of AEF. And you want. What is D? D is. Uh, just so many points. How do you construct X circle? I didn't construct any X circles. 
Um, I just constructed the foot of the in-touch and then reflected it. Honestly, blue is bad. Uh, Honestly, if I was trying to construct an X circle, I'd probably construct the arc midpoint and then reflect the end center over the arc midpoint. But fortunately, that's not needed. So I want the circum. Oh, what the heck is PDO? What is this? Okay, well, the knockout point. Does it pass through I if the condition is true? Looks like they're all concept look. Why is L defined again? Oh, I define L because uh, I would use it to construct the mixed linear in circle. But it looks like when AFE, so AFE always passes through L. This is actually a lemma from spiral similarity. So AFE uh, contains L. If you want a reference for this lemma, look at IMO 2013 problem three. Yeah, so, okay, I'll, I'll say what the proof is, which is that there is a spiral similarity at the intersection point of the light blue circle and the red circle, which maps BF to CE. But because BF is equal to CE, that spiral similarity must actually be a rotation, which means that L should be the upper argument point. And that's what the proof of that goes. Okay, so now if the in center also lies on there, well, actually, this is all just saying that BF equals M, IM equals CE, right? Like this spiral similarity at L, uh, not only does it map FB to EC, but it also uh, allegedly should map IM. Hmm, okay, so if N is on there. Huh. Wow, that's a lot of equivalents. Like, it's equivalent to BF parallel to CM, really? Or is it C CF parallel to BM and BE parallel to CM? Wait, this is really strange. Okay. Hmm. What does it mean for N to lie on that circle? No, it doesn't. So the hypothesis, the problem hypothesis is that N lies on AEF and the diagram is suggesting that if that is true, then the N center also lies on there, which would be huge if it was the case. Um, and Leah, it looks like that's true. Um, <sighs> what is going on? So, 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 so. I could just bury it. <laughs> <laughs> 
If I analyze on this circle, F only if I does. Because you can get a better centric coordinates of... It's a weird condition, though. No, I think... Uh, do you want to use Barry? I could use Barry. I, it's kind of gross, though. The interesting thing is, so far none of this actually involves x, y, or p. So I'm gonna hide the, all the mixed to linear stuff because right now I have a claim that doesn't seem like it depends on that. And I'm curious how it will tie in there, but right now it doesn't seem like it's important. Why aren't you trying to prove just consecutivity? Uh, well, if you have an approach, I'd like to hear it. I don't. I don't see one yet. I'm trying to think like it's sort of BFEC looks like a complete quadrilateral picture to me with two congruent sides. So um, might want to draw the Bevan point. Which is the Bevan point? It's like where the X center and stuff. I forget, I, I suddenly forget which one's the Bevan. Bevan point is like if I take the X centers and draw the altitudes to their closest sides, right? Gregon looks like it's on the circle, really? Wait, that's very strange. Okay, well let's draw the Bevan point. People want to draw it. V is two times L minus I. Oh frick, I used V already. Uh... Wow, what'd you look at that? Is it always on the circle? Oh, that's unconditionally on the circle. Wait, why is that? The heck? Why is that true? Okay, this, also, this notation sucks. I'm gonna, we're gonna repurpose this. Can you add X-Central Triangle? I could, I guess, but I'm still... Something about this is bugging me, but I can't put my finger on it. There's something I'm not seeing. What does it mean for if I have a complete quadrilateral and this point N lies on this circle? Like just from the complete quadrilateral, uh, nine point circle right angle config with respect to X central. Which nine point circle right angle config? <laughs> Wait, what did I miss? The heck? Wait, how'd you get that?
with a triangle in center thing. Uh, I agree, but I don't. I, I guess I don't see why. Is it like AH? Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Like if I lies on it, then V does as well. I agree, but it looks like right now V lies on the light blue circle unconditionally, even without even doesn't pass through I. And that's the part that's confusing the heck out of me. Like I don't see why this is true. This doesn't feel like it should be true. Uh, well, okay, actually, hang on. If I just draw the okay, fine, I'll draw the eccentrics. Oh, this is gonna be so annoying. <laughs> Okay, I A equals two times M minus I. I B equals intersect line C I A. And I C equals intersect line A L line. Okay, so what's going on? This guy, this guy. Alright, fine, we'll draw the bevin point. Why did we move P? Because the claims that we're trying to prove don't seem to depend on it. So I, I want to figure out what the heck is going on first and then worry about P later. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay, it's true by English chasing. Yeah. Um, this is okay. Okay, so V also lies on the circle. Wow, I learned something new today. This is the most weird circle I've seen in a while. Yeah. So Bevan point. This is how it's defined. It's like this is a right angle because AB is anti-parallel to IB IA, and so so that's the Bevan point. For people that want to know, it's the circumcenter of these three guys, and it lies on these three perpendiculars. In any case, this angle is now promised to be equal to this angle because this is, they're both like 180 minus twice whatever this is. Bevan point. Okay, so V lies on there unconditionally. Oh, does that help me? <laughs> I'm so confused why I is there though. So if N lies on AEF, then does something happen? It's like if B, E, and C, F meet at a certain angle. Have I done a video intro? Yeah, briefly. Not a very elaborate one. Uh, Nako line is B and... Oh, Nako line. Um... Nako line is like in center Gurgon point centroid or something like that? Or, I'm sorry, in center Nago point centroid. Yeah, let's see what it is. So why why is the in center on there? Like so I know that this uh, these are all separate. Spiker. I never remember which one the spiker center is. Is AIVL a rectangle? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Okay, actually, so I guess if N is on here, 
I don't want to show AI is perpendicular to IO. Oh, dang it. Oh, I see. It's this, this picture. The triangles for which this is a true are going to be the triangles for which BC is the average of AB and AC. I, I remember this seeing this kind of picture. I don't want to see AB plus AC equals DBC. And it's somehow tied to N lying on the server. I, I just don't see why N is involved. Like, there should be something, but I don't see it. The spiral similarity at L will take... Uh, <laughs> I could just bury it at that point though. I could say by bury like N lies on AEF and then try to rearrange that into uh what it is. That seems very annoying. On the other hand, the, the condition that n lies in the circle can, I guess, be sort of interpreted with PowerPoint. Like, if I write bn times be equals bf times ba, is that reasonable? Yeah. Yeah, so I on there translates to pure land condition. So if it was a contest, you definitely just bury the N now. But I want to see if I can find a synthetic way to do it. Yeah, AI equals IM. So by tall basically what happens is by Ptolemy's theorem on ABMC, you'll get like AM equals 2BM equals 2CM. And yeah, it's <laughs> just less bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh Yeah, so it's going to into AI equals S minus A. Maybe we should add in those tangency points again. This one? No. It's, it's... <sighs> No, it's not S minus A, right? Is T1 the center of O and D? I doubt it. Uh, it's That's not a symmetric definition, so it's never true. Yeah, it, the problem is N. Like, N is the one point that I don't have a good interpretation for it right now. And it's driving me up the wall. NB equals NC. Is that a coincidence? Honestly, it might not be. Uh, N is also equidistant. Why? Why would that be true? Hmm. So it's saying like this snuggle angle.
So B and MC is a parallelogram. Yeah. Okay, right, because... So if I lies on here, then... So actually, I can show if I lies on here, then B and MC is a parallelogram. Because now this is equal to this equal this. And so this, like, this is an isosceles trapezoid, so this is a parallelogram, this is a parallelogram. Now it's a rhombus, now you have 180 minus A. Um, in the other direction, I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. So I can actually prove the converse. I prove that I is on the circle, then N is on the circle. But I don't see how you do the other way. Uh, I do think this parallelogram is worth thinking about. It's, I have a thing, and then... It's, it's, oh god, that's so stupid. AF over AFB equals A over AC. Von Alpha. We need to show AB. Now this sucks! I, I have the converse! Freaking... No. No. I have the converse because the the way I got the angle is because it's a parallelogram. Can I reverse that? <sighs> If n lies on the circle, yeah, the reflection of the knock point. point. That just seems, that's, that seems really crappy. Is there anything that's true about N unconditionally? Like, is that... No, no... How do you feel the converse? Um... And I hate this. You want me to add the medial triangle? Oh, that seems like a lot to add in. So if AEIF is cyclic, um. First of all, because the. Bevan point unconditionally lies on AEF. It follows that AIV is 90 degrees, ergo AI I is the midpoint of AM. Therefore, by Ptolemy's, um, you get the length condition that you want. In addition, you also get N lies on here because if like this length, if IM is equal to MB is equal to CM, then you get a bunch of parallel lines, which imply B and CM is a parallelogram, and that parallelogram gives you the angle that you need to prove the concyclic. But I don't see the converse. It's like, conversely... I hate this. ADNO. Is that unconditionally cyclic? It's, well, I bet it's true in this configuration just because like everything seems like it's true in this picture. Yeah. Yeah, actually that follows, that follows my power of a point from M immediately. So MD times MA equals MC squared, which is also equal to M thing times ML. And then by having and doubling it follows ADNO is cyclic. And so P lying on there. <sighs> F 
fine. So you now what? Why? Why is the other direction true? If n lies on the circle. Can I use part of a point from M? No, I don't know. I'm not promised that N lies on that perpendicular bisector. Um, yeah. Crap. Yeah, yeah, we need AB plus AC equals TBC with N from N on being on the circle. And it, it's frustrating because I know that in principle I could just either bury it or throw um, part of a point from B at it. And it would like have to work. Just, you know, because BN times BE is like some multiple of BE, and so you know, you get some condition. But I'm annoyed because I have such a clean synthetic proof of the converse, and I have no synthetic proof of the four direction. If I have AB plus AC equals 2BC, then I is the midpoint of AM by Ptolemy's theorem. And that will give me I's on the circle. Yeah, so I agree, like, I could just draw, actually draw on the medial triangle. What's the medial triangle do? Knuckle line? You want the fact that NG and I are collinear, is that what you're saying? Okay, fine. Uh, so MA equals midpoint A. Okay, so here's the... Please teach how to solve hard problems. Oh, believe me, I wish I knew how. Um, the spiker is the eye of medial triangle. I agree. So the spiker center is the triangle center MAMB MC1. Ew, wait, what the heck? Is it the midpoint of IN? The heck? Oh, okay. I did not know that was... Uh... The heck? Why is that true? Okay, well... It's true. Okay, so... Noggle... Fine. I drew the spiker center. Um... Why does it help me? Okay, now draw the centroid, okay. It also- I know that it also lies on the line. That tells you I is the knuckle of the medial tree. I'm confused now. Uh, so unconditionally, I those four points are always collinear. If n lies on the circle, what does that 
do. So the speakers, the spiker center is the, let's see. And I parallel to BC. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, with, but I, like, wh where is the circle condition being used? That's the part I'm missing. Like, why, why, where, where do I, how do I use the fact that N is on light blue circle? Like, like, how do I use the light blue circle? B H N C. Okay, so okay, the point is, I I take B H N C, I amalgamate it to the medial triangle, uh, ortho center goes to the circumcenter of the medial triangle, ergo the... Okay. Where does N go? Does N go to... Oh, there are, there are, this is this is okay. So and maps to I. So take so take the homotopy mapping N, B and C to. Thank you, Julian S, for the follow. N C two M B M C I This is homotopy at the centroid. I'm lost too. <laughs> well we'll figure it out. Uh So when says I'm supposed to take a homotopy at G mapping NBC. No, wait. Is this under at G? Yeah, it's under at G. And it will take. MBMC I and so I lies on the what the heck does that work are you freaking that's <laughs> okay so actually ignore the spiker point and ignore yeah ignore the spiker point so Here's a circle. This circle is called B and C. Uh, I'll draw it in orange here. So, this is the reflection of the circumcircle. Actually, ignore. Okay, ignore the Bevan point. Also, ignore IIE for that matter. We don't need that for now. Here. And uh, ignore M sub A. Ignore. And we might need V later. We'll leave it for now. Okay, so the, the, the flow of the logic is this. By hypothesis, we're given that B and C 
uh, lies on this, like, B and C has angle 180 minus A. So this orange circle is the reflection of the green circle. And the knuckle line is the line through I, G, and N with G in a 2 to 1 ratio. So what this means is that I can map this orange circle through G as follows. B goes to M sub B, C goes to M sub C, and N goes to I. So A, M, C, I, M, B are cyclic. Ergo, I is the midpoint of I, M. What the heck? Wow, okay, that works. Um... So, ergo... A, M, B, M, C, so I bisect A, M, so then it follows the, uh, well then everything follows. Uh, so now I is the midpoint, and let, let me flow the logic. Um, so 2, so B, C is the average of A, B plus A, C. And now... Yeah, f yeah, I'm not worried about P yet. I mean, I assume once we have all the stuff we want, then P is the easy part. Okay, so if that's true, then... Okay, let's hide the orange circle again. Why does that lie there? Hang on. Hmm... How do I get I on the light blue circle? Man, I, I had to- uh, I didn't write it down. Oh crap. So if I is the midpoint- oh yeah, I lost in the circle because the Bevan point is like, okay, A, L, V, E, F are unconditionally cyclic and then O, V. Okay, so now, so since I, V, O are unconditionally collinear and V lies in A, E, F, L, now I lies on the light blue circle. And so now we get, um, Great. And now, hence, BF equals CE equals MI, but now MI equals MB equals MC, and that gives us, like, five equal lengths, so now N is that. Okay, cool. So we have everything we ever wanted. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Okay, cool. So now let's actually deal with the mixed linear stuff. So I gave you a proof earlier that AD and O are cyclic by power of a point from M, because, yeah. Okay, now cyclic. Great. And so now we just want to show that circle passes through the mixed linear touch point, which up till now has been not doing very much, but let's bring it in. Uh... Okay, so AD and R are cyclic and we want P to be there as well. Uh, what angle can I go through? Please teach how to score, get non-zero score on AMO. Um, usually you get a non-zero score by solving at least one of the problems and just turning it in. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so AD and I click. Um, right, what were you trying to do? So AP is... So PL is a thing, and ML 
is also a thing. Which, which angles do I control? Um, The circum center of PIO? I would believe that. Uh, or, sorry, PIM. Yeah, okay, so D is promise midpoint of IM, right? Is that true? Yeah. So IN is promised perpendicular to NL because of, yeah. Okay, so let's draw that circle. That looks good. And okay, so we have a bunch of right angles there. Fine, fine, fine. And how does that help me with the cyclic? Wait, done. Wait, wait, hang on. Why is that? Wait, what did I miss? Oh! Uh... I is the in-center of APN? Is that what's happening? No. Wait, I'm confused now. Tracing finish. Wait, wait, which angles do I flow through? Uh, is it? Oh, can I compute PND? Is that what's going to happen? No, PND sucks. Um, PDN and PON. Oh, fine. Yeah, that works. <laughs> PDN is... to be a little careful because of the doubling. Um, <laughs> let, let me use T, DPN. So like DP, DPN is equal to like 90 minus and um,
DPO. Should I use DPO? Oh, whatever. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, wait, let, let me actually make sure I do, don't botch the ending. How can I deal with this in a way that I don't need to deal, like, have any angles? <laughs> DPS should work, right? Yeah, okay, that's a 90 degree angle. Um, PML Why am I off by a factor of two? I hmm. Wait, what do I do about the doubling? Uh PDA okay, let, let's just embrace the double. Um P M N while P L N is equal to PLN is tw twice angle PLN. Okay, we're fine. Twice angle PLN equals PLN. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. Yeah, all right, so that's part A and part B. Uh, PD is equal to DM is equal to half I MI is half equal to Yeah, so the second condition is saying that like S minus PD is S minus A over 2 So the problem condition is saying like S minus A over 2 is equal to 2 sevenths A and And also, like, A equals half B plus C. So for the second half, okay, someone help me with the answer expression. <laughs> uh, so S minus A over two is like B plus C minus A over four. Hang on, what? Wait, don't these contradict each other? Did I screw something up? How's PDS minus A over two? Oh, no, so P PD was, so this is a circle with diameter IM, right? So PD is equal to DM is equal to IM over two, and IM was supposed to be equal to BF because it's isosceles trapezoid. And this thing is S minus A, right? Isn't BD against DC3? Wait, am I crazy? Like PD is half of IM, right? Oh, I mean, if I wanted to solve this during the test, I would just throw Barry at it. <laughs> like, it's just... <laughs> it's a Barry problem. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but I'm confused now. I don't get IM equals BF. IM is equal to BM. Or, IM is equal to CM. Because M is always a circumcircle of BIC. And... 
BM, CN is a parallelogram, so BF equals CM, right? But I'm confused now because this seems to say, like, B PD should be equal to, like, half of BF. And BF is equal to S minus A. So I'm confused at how these equations are consistent with each other. Like, it seems like they just contradict each other. So I'm messing something up. Why is 2 angle PLN equal to PLN? Uh, by the inscribed angle theorem. Yeah, like POM, really. Wait, hang on. No, what the, what's with the second part? The, the conditions don't match, right? Am I crazy? No, it, it's not about batch. Like, one equation says A is the average of B and C, and the other equation says B plus C is equal to, like, 15 sevenths times a like they're not compatible right am i am i being pranked no 15 sevenths is not two what no 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 no, no. Hang on, what is going on? If my triangle is equilateral, then PD over BC is what? Um, something I don't know. Either. No, I, I'm very confused. Why? Why do these? What did I mess up? IM is equal to MC is equal to BF. BF is equal to S minus A. S minus A uh, over two A. the heck? Hey okay, guys, help me finish the problem! We're almost there! I just need to do this dumb answer extraction. <sighs> what did I mess up? BD... PD is... It's just minus A over 2. Okay, wait. Well, if I make this an isosceles triangle... What 
Where's the mistake? Let's make this equilateral. Alright, let's make it equilateral. Oh, let's move this here so there's a well defined midpoint. No, I'm very confused. Am I wrong about, um... It is a parallelogram, right? Like, BF... Like, like B BN seems is a parallelogram, right? I I'm not making that up. Yeah, these are parallel. So BN is equal to CM. Or BF is equal to CM, right? And... What is up? Oh, God. Okay, never mind. I see the mistake. Uh, CM is not equal to BF. I'm just stupid. Uh, Alright, never mind. It's it's IM. Whatever IM is. Okay, let's, let's try that again. So, I'm told that IM over BC is something. And I also told an average statement. So I am over BC equals four sevenths. What's the explicit formula for I am? It's like or so BM is going to be equal to what? So we're given bn is 4 sevenths a, and by the law of sines, it's equal to hmm, 2r times sine a over 2. Okay, and the circumradius is a is times sine a, right? Okay, so this is true, and if this is true, then we can use this to... Something feels weird to me. The sign, don't, shouldn't the signs point the other way? Uh, it's A over sine A. Yeah. Okay, so if this is true, then I can extract the value of cosine A. So let's see if I am not incompetent. So... The double angle for sine is 2 sine a halves cosine a halves. So 4 sevenths is equal to the reciprocal of 1 over cosine a over 2. So the cosine of a... The cosine of a over 2 is eight seven, uh, 7 eighths. And finally the cosine of a is equal to twice 7 eighths squared minus 1 which is 49 times 64, 98, 34 over 64. Okay, 17, 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs>
All right, let's write this up. So as I promised, I'm gonna start doing write-ups in this stream rather than offline because otherwise I never get to them and it takes forever. Um, this also has the nice effect that if I make a mistake, hopefully I will find out earlier rather than later. All right. So. Okay, so let's copy the diagram. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna mess, move this diagram around so this stuff is. That's a good snapshot. Okay, so let's hide the X centers because we don't need them. We didn't use those in our proof. I also want I to actually lie on it, so let's... Okay. Uh, algebraic geometry is sometimes useful in Olympiad problems, but... Um, in my opinion... I don't know. Algebraic geometry is also just like really hard. Like I feel like there's there's almost no justification to like learn algebraic geometry f f for relevance to math olympiads properly. Anyways, like I think it's good to know that cubics intersect like two cubics probably intersect at nine points or something like that. But um. Ah, some of these labels are not well placed. So B should be here. C should be here. This direction. F should be out here. B is down here. Okay. Okay, so let V be the femhoid, G be the centroid. What other points did we define? We didn't actually. Okay. So claim. The big claim is that. Um, the point I is the midpoint of AM. Well, let's see. Unconditionally, B is the midpoint of IO. V lies on AEF. V is the antipode, actually, V is the antipode of A on AEF. How do you spell unconditionally? A on AEF, and G lies on IN in a 1 to 2 ratio. So, proof of this is. We are given the angle, uh, directed angle ENF equals directed angle C 
so the reflection so the circum so we may take a homophily of ratio minus half centered at G which maps N to I B to M B C to M C the resulting circle is known to pass through A. Thus, since A, M, B, M, C, and the I, then I is the midpoint. Okay, and now claim uh, I lies on A, E, F, V. And BMCN is a rhombus. Okay, so since I is the midpoint, I mean, uh, it follows void prep day I, so hence the first part. For the second part, what we say is that um, the spiral let for the second part we let L be the arc midpoint and M and N. Second one, I'll be the arc midpoint. Okay. And then, then the spiral similarity L maps BF to IM to CE. Since BF equals CE is a congruence, also BI equals IM equals CM. So we get BF equals CM. Oh, wait, that does not give a rhombus, right? Does it? That's not good enough to promise a rhombus because F is not on the circle. Oh crap. Uh... Alright, so this is why it's good to write up here. So the items are. Okay, so I get all those congruent lengths. Actually, uh, oh, it's actually not parallel. Wait, it's not a rhombus at all. What am I talking about? Uh, semi equals C. Wait, okay, so I better make sure the finish of this is legit then. Okay, so ADNO cyclic we disagree was from Harvard point, right? So are we promised yet the N is on line MO? We are not. Mi is not equal to Bf is equal to... 
Wait, is the mine just not equal? Li is not equal to... Oh, shoot. Wait, okay, so I am just being really... I'm just clowning. All right. So the answer extraction I had... Okay, so... <sighs> oh my god, today's one of those days. Everything I write is wrong. Yeah, you write that, um, okay. Yeah, so LF, LI... So MI is not actually equal. So, that means this answer extraction is garbage, first of all. This is all just wrong. And all right. So what am I doing? PT answer extraction is right. Oh, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, it's not okay. Yeah. Uh. But I guess the thing is, how do I show n is on the perpendicular bisector? Like I I want this to be a kite. It's not a rhombus, but I want it to be a kite. No, the, the, the answer is actually okay, because I, I used the correct thing. I'm just confused why... Is it, wait, is there? Okay, let, let me check the diagram. So I, I had this fake proof that, um... How do I know n is on the perpendicular bisector? So I have the midpoint thing, and n is the intersection of nagel parts. I think that the min. Yeah, actually, how do I show b and c m as a rhombus? I guess that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I want this to be angle a over two, right? Homothety at back through g. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. No, that'll work. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so mid I is the midpoint of N. IMV equals IMC. Oh my god, I am climbing today. Okay, so N is there. That's fine. Now I want it to be so... Okay, so okay, so now um, since ma equals two mi, it follows by power of a p ma equals two mi equals two mb. It follows by shooting lemma that MD is half of my, there we go. And then,
So you have direct rectangle INL is directed IL is 90 degrees. So you find that N is actually NBMC is a rhombus. So this guy here is a rhombus. That's fine. Finally, to show return. Okay, so that's actually proof of it. We compute the directed angle of PD. Um, claimed. So D is the center of. I'm garbling everything. Okay. So we compute the following angles. PDN is equal to 2 twice angle PMN, which is twice angle Oh my god. Really, nothing I'm writing today is correct. <laughs> PLM and twice direct angle PLM is directed angle POM. That ADON is cyclic from power of a point at M. Now we compute this and that'll do it. Okay, and then for part B, well, I'm thinking probably just since DP is equal to half MI, we equals half MI equals half MD. Uh, just take this take this calculation. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, solution done. It looks so short once you've actually written it down. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And then here's part B. We did it. All right. So the mixed linear in circle did mostly turn out to not be relevant as I predicted. Like all the claims didn't depend on the mixed linear, so that was nice. Um, I was surprised at how much of a role the Bevan point played, but I guess that makes sense given the X circle touch points. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. 
How long did that take? It's like 10 already. Uh -oh. oh lord. 